There's a former advisor to President George W. Bush who is warning that RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel may be in some deep trouble going forward. Carl Rove made that prediction on Friday following last week's revelation by the Detroit News of audio recordings of then-President Trump and McDaniel pressuring local elections officials to vote against certifying the 2020 election results. I think the pre former president's got a problem with this. They had voted to certify the election. He had attempted to, to force them to change their decision, which they tried to do. Uh, I think this is what we would call election interference. And uh, just as he got into trouble in Georgia over a similar act, calling the secretary of state and saying, find me 11,000 some odd more votes, this is a problem. The president, former president should not have been doing this. These people are supposedly independent officials who are supposed to certify the election based upon their review of the process and mm -hmm. the procedures in place. And he's attempting to get them to change their opinion after the fact. This is not a good move if accurate and if this tape is, is, is true. Uh, the former president's created another problem for himself. Uh, real quick, is this a problem for Ronna McDaniel as well? She's usually very cautious about things like this. Oh, I, I think it is. I think the chairman is in trouble here because uh, she's saying to them, if you uh, if you agree to make it uh, change your decision on certification in Wayne County, we'll get your lawyers to stand by you. And hmm. um, I, again, I think that was highly inappropriate. So, Molly, what do you think of that Carl Rove's take? I mean, look, there's plenty of Republicans who have issues with Ronna McDaniel because she keeps overseeing losing election cycles. Uh, but now maybe there's some legal trouble, too. What's your what's your read? I mean, I think the top line here is when you've lost Car Carl Rove, right? Not not a great look. Um, I do think that when you listen to that tape, it's unbelievable. And and I would say this is not the first election tape. This is not the first tape we've heard Donald Trump sort of be doing his slightly uh, mafia-like tactics on our American government, you know, on our American electoral system. But I would say that there's something really chilling about having Rana, who knows better and has tried, you know, as much as possible to not be like that. I mean, obviously, she has been brought into the mud of Trumpism, as have many of these Republicans. But uh, it was pretty chilling. And I think that I think it's going to hurt her. I mean, look, the thing where they're saying, you know, we're going to get you lawyers. I mean, it just it's it's so evocative of these other tapes, but it is really disturbing. And it's really not how we do it in America, which I think is the sort of key important uh, <clears throat> point of all of this is we have a democracy and and party leaders don't pressure uh, electors to go their way. Molly uh, Shopton here. Isn't it uh, somewhat revealing that Donald Trump would use his Christmas messages attacking Jack Smith and the prosecutions and the trials and not focusing on Iowa, which is what, three weeks away <laughs> by attacking his opponents, you would think this close to an election or to a, a, a caucus that he'd be focusing on his political opponents. One, is this indicative that he's really more concerned than he would appear or want to appear about his pending trials and criminality being convicted? And two, that he really doesn't see a threat even though Nikki Haley is gaining in the polls, he really doesn't see a threat to uh, Iowa and New Hampshire in terms of him needing to focus on his Christmas message against his opponents. Yeah, I think both of those things are true. Look, Trump has never been a focused politician, right? He's never been a person who's like, I need votes here, I need votes there. You know, he's sort of always just had very good, or I wouldn't say good, he's had an effective instinct at speaking to a certain group of people. Those people are largely, uh, you know, people who, I would say his base, he, one of the things he got very successful for doing was touching that third rail, right? Saying the things that Republicans pretended never to believe in and giving those people a candidate that they had never had. And he got these, not, no, you know, these low propensity voters out there to vote. Um, but he was never like a gifted tactician. So I do think, I think he believes he has this locked up and, and maybe he does at uh, the primary. And then I also think that he is, remember he got into this election 
because he hoped that it would prevent him from getting, you know, facing legal consequences. I mean, that's why he got in so early. And so I do think ultimately, you know, the rest of these candidates are running to be president, but Donald Trump is really running because if he wins again, he will, he believes anyway, that he will stay out of legal jeopardy.